Ed, you're adding another feather to your cap. You're in the process of writing a book. Yes. And one of the uh, cornerstones of the book will be something called the eight metrics, sort of the rules of investing. Can you talk about those? So for a long time, it's bothered me as to why people do business with certain financial advisors. Um, I have clients that I actually still have my first client, okay? And I have clients for many different reasons, but it always confuses me as to how someone selects somebody. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I was reflecting on this that people don't know how to evaluate their investment portfolio or their financial advisor. You know, and so I created the eight metrics, and these are crucial. And every single one of these metrics needs to be understood in order to properly evaluate your financial advisor. And that's what the book is about. Um, it'll be out soon, I hope. Um, but in order to look at the eight metrics, let me list them for you. The first one is, what rate of return do you need to make in order to not lose purchasing power? And this is after taxes and your cost of living increase and fees. What is that number that you need to make? Most people think they know, but they don't because they don't factor in that cost of living increase properly and they really don't look at the taxes in their overall portfolio properly. So that's one metric we need to figure out. Mm -hmm. The second one is a term we hear oftentimes, which is standard deviation. And that's a statistical term used in many things uh, in the world, but in investing, it has to do with the dispersion from the average. So if you had a rate of return of 10, what kind of standard deviation is appropriate for you, all right? Mm -hmm. And it, it really is 0.8 or 80% or less. Now, the third one I love, it's called variance drag phantom tax. And I love it when people take my advice and do this. Go to your financial advisor and simply say, what is my variance drag phantom tax on my portfolio? Now, what I, the reason I love it is I made it up, right. okay? I completely made this up because there are a lot of statistics out there that are very close to this, but I wanted it to be simple. And you want your variance drag phantom tax to be 0.8 or lower on your portfolio. And if you go to my website, we can work these numbers and you can see exactly what it is. And if it's 1.5 or higher, that's a disaster. That means you're taking too much risk for the return. Again, these have to be measured over a seven to 10 year uh, time horizon. Then the next one is the Sharpe Ratio. Bill Sharpe won a Nobel Prize in 1990 for the Sharpe Ratio. It was one third of the prize for modern portfolio theory. He's a brilliant professor, mm -hmm. University of Chicago, he's at Stanford now, and <clears throat> that number needs to be one or higher. Another metric that people have not you know, really gotten from their financial advisor, and I don't understand why. Wouldn't you like to know, Don, at the beginning of any 12-month period, what is the probability of a loss? Mm -hmm. Okay, If I came up to you and I said, the portfolio you currently have has a 35% chance of losing money in the next 12 months, you might think, wow, never heard it put that way. Right, exactly. Right? Well, 97.5% of all retail portfolios, okay, have a probability of a loss of 25% or higher mm -hmm. in the next 12 months. The next, next, next metric is the amount of money that's at risk. If you had a portfolio, you would like to know over the next 12 months, based on historical data, what actually is the probability of a loss and how much is at risk. Those are crucial statistics. Next is, and, and I'm almost done, but, but, but these are very important, yes. is the upper and lower range based on historical data. We have to say based on historical data for the, for the lawyers, by the way, okay? <laughs> Always have to say that. But the upper and lower returns, you want that to be as narrow as possible. So if I said, I have a portfolio that historically has returned 10, and I have another portfolio that has historically returned 10, they seem the same. But if I told you that one had a standard deviation of six, and another 15, you then would know, based on what we do for you, how narrow that disparage, the, the dispersion would be. And you would much rather have a portfolio that has a range of minus two to plus 22 versus minus 20 to plus 40. Most people and most financial advisors don't have a clue in the world what they've given to their clients. So what we do at Chapwood is we go in and we analyze these portfolios and again, show you exactly what you have. 
away from all the salesmanship mm -hmm. or you know whoever's selling you something, we give you the raw numbers. And the last thing is the correlations to the S&P. Correlation is a statistical term and it has to do with how much you move up and down with the stock market. And when you're managing money, you wanna make sure that you always have some investments that aren't doing well. Because if everything goes up based on a positive economic condition, Everything will go down when that economic condition changes, and we don't want that. We don't want the ups and downs. We want a straight line, or as close to a straight line, of consistency as possible. And, and these are metrics that you have created. I, I've created, renamed, renamed, shaped them, but this is how you evaluate an advisor. You don't evaluate an advisor by what friends they have and who likes that person. I'm making it easy. I want people to clearly understand what this game is, because guess what? It's not my money, it's not your financial advisor's money, it's your money, it's your dreams, it's what you're gonna leave behind, and we have to have clarity. Lack of clarity kills people. So what we do at Chapwood is make sure that you have complete clarity on exactly what you have.